Okay, so we're going to try something new. Since the Epson pen seems to be dying on us, I'm going to attempt to use the tools on just the MacBook. So the audio is probably a little bit better, not quite as echoey, but who knows, the skill may not be there. All right, so lesson 2.6, we talked about special angles on parallel lines. Let's review a little bit about uh, the vocabulary. So if I have two sets of lines that are parallel and I have a transversal coming across, I create all sorts of angle relationships. So for example, we have corresponding angles. Corresponding angles would be those that go, they're on the same side of the transversal, but opposite sides, one's interior, one's exterior. Now corresponding angles, there are always going to be four pairs of corresponding angles. We have these here and here, and then we would have the ones right above it, and then we have the ones on the left-hand side, and then the ones on the, uh, underneath those. So four pairs right there. Let's go ahead and put some numbers, name these angles a little bit. So we have angle one, we have angle two, not the neatest since I'm drawing on the trackpad, angle four, three, angle four, angle five, <laughs> or not, angle six, angle seven, and angle eight. Ooh, tricky to draw. Okay. So angles four and eight are, the, are one example of the corresponding angles. Alternate interior angles, interior meeting inside the parallel lines. So for example, we have angles three and angle six. They're interior and they're alternating because they're on opposite sides of that transversal. Alternating exterior would be any angle that is outside the parallel lines and again, on opposite sides of the transversal. So two and seven and one and eight. So we have two pairs of alternating interior angles and two pairs of alternating exterior angles. All right, so that's a little bit of vocabulary there to remind us about what's going on. Let's clear that off and take a look at what's the point. In the course of our lesson today, we talked about the conjectures. So we had three conjectures that we made from the parallel lines. I want to try something here. Let's see if I can get into my shapes, get a line going. There's a nice line. All right, not quite super parallel, but we're getting there. Okay, now let's get back to our pin. So if I have these uh, parallel lines, I haven't marked them parallel, but you're hearing me tell you that they're parallel. And we have our transversal going diagonally. So the conjecture was alternating interior angles are congruent and alternating exterior angles are congruent. Also, we already know from vertical angle conjecture that vertical angles are congruent. So technically speaking, if I know the measure of this angle, let's get a bigger dot there. Oh yeah, no, I want blue. If I know the measure of this angle, that means I know the measure of this angle, and this angle, and this angle. And then vice versa. If I know the measure of this angle, I would know this one because they're vertical. I would know this one because it's alternating interior to this angle, but it's also corresponding to this angle up here. And then, same thing here. I know the measure of this angle because it is corresponding to this angle. It is alternating exterior to this angle and it's vertical to that angle. So lots of reasons why I can use uh, deductive reasoning to prove the measure of those angles. And the reason why that's important is because if you are given a question that says, all right, here's the measure of this angle, it's 100 and, oh, let's say 130 degrees. Again, not using a pen, so it's not the neatest. If it's 130 degrees, what's the measure of this angle? Well, I can use deductive reasoning to determine that answer. So step one, using alternate exterior angles, I could say that the measure of this angle here is 130 degrees. 
And so if I were to ask you, well, how do you know it's 130 degrees? You would say the alternate exterior angles conjecture tells me that if two lines are parallel cut by a transversal, then alternating, uh, or sorry, those are corresponding angles, not alternating exterior, corresponding angles. Hopefully some of you were listening to that and went, whoa, Miss Smith, that's incorrect. So corresponding angles conjecture. If two lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So that would be step one. Then step two would be to solve 180 minus 130 to get 50 degrees here. And you would know that it's 50 degrees because these two angles are linear pair. So you could say the linear pair conjecture, if two angles share a common ray and form a straight line, then they're a linear pair and their measures are equal to 180 degrees. So angle X is equal to 50 degrees. Now that's just one way you could have done it. You could have used the linear pair conjecture first to figure out one of these other two red dots and then determined, okay, if you figured out this dot here that I'm currently pointing to, well then using alternating interior angles conjecture, that dot is 50 degrees. Or if you had figured out this red dot here that I'm pointing to, you could have said corresponding angles conjecture means this is 50 degrees. Um, same thing, you could have started off using one of the core, uh, congruent angle conjectures to figure out any of the blue dots to give those measures and then linear pair uh, conjecture to get us over to 50 degrees. So there's a number of conjectures you can use to prove your point. And when you're asked on a quiz or a test, you know, how do you know? Explain your reasoning. This is where you would write out those, those statements, those conjectures to prove where you're coming from. So that's what, the, uh, that's what the book is, I mean, that's what we're looking for with these conjectures is how can we use this to help us with our, uh, with our work? How we can, can we prove it? And really, that's what geometry is about. There may not be times where we're using parallel lines and all, corresponding angles. If you go into architecture, there's a great you know, use for that. If you're going into you know, a professional pool player, you know, then yeah, you're definitely gonna use angles and whatnot. But realistically, most of us probably won't use it that often, so what's the point? Well, the point is we're learning these processes of using inductive reasoning to determine the patterns and to create these conjectures. And once we have proven that the conjectures work for all circumstances, no matter the exact numbers or the exact uh, names of the labels or whatever, but they work for all circumstances that meet those characteristics, well then, we can then use the deductive reasoning to prove how we got our answers. And that process is what your future colleges and your future employers are looking for, is can you use inductive and deductive reasoning to find the answer and prove the answer? That's really what I'm looking for, and I've given you a few examples of how we're going to use it. So hopefully you are studying well for your test, and if you have any questions, we'll talk about it in next class because that's going to be the review class. In the meantime, have a great weekend and finish up Chapter 2 study.